Good morning, students. Uh, how you all felt about the previous molecular biology things I wanted to know? Because uh, molecular biology is considered one of the most technical chapter in your biology subject. And other subjects are more descriptive. You must be knowing the reproduction, blind reproduction, human reproduction. They are actually very simple because they are very descriptive in nature. If you read it, you will get it. But once you enter molecular biology, you will have to be more with a subject, right? You are need to know some chemistry, biochemistry in that, and biological aspects and chemical aspects. Everything you have to combine and explain. Therefore, whenever students, because commonly I have heard that students saying that molecular biology, I have not studied properly, or I, I did not get it properly. But one uh, thing is, you have to revise this subject, right? How many times you read it, that may, how many times you write it, you will get it easy. And not only you have not by heart this, but you have to understand this. Because uh, most of the students whose I whom with whom I converse, had conversation, they told that molecular biology, some parts they are just read, but they have forgotten. But this happens. It's not that the complete description is there. Here everything is you know, technical, right? What is RNA, what is RNA, what is DNA, how is it how it has done, what is the logic behind this. So therefore you need to have continuous reading of the same chapter again and again. That's the reason why I am doing from last class also, the DNA replication, I revised it. Along with that, the concerned co concepts also I am enlarging and explaining them. So this is the basic requirement for you also. You need to read this, not only as a subject, just like a reading, like a story. To involve in it and find out the logic behind this. How it was done during the research. I told you some of the books like Renin, Leninger, you have to read it. If you don't get it, still on online you can get it. right? So I wanted all of you to read, learn, understand it. But one thing I wanted to revise is protein synthesis. Because protein synthesis is a huge thing. right? Because although it happens within 3 to 5 minutes in every cell, lot of things are there you have to concentrate. Like what type of enzymes? What is exactly copying, when it is happening, how it is translated, what is coding language. Like everything is a different, 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 you know, subgroups are there in the subject. So you need to understand this better, right. So therefore I am giving you first thing that is now I am starting with the, I am starting with the protein synthesis. So what is exactly protein synthesis? It is a synthesis of proteins in the cell by using all the amino acids present in the cytoplasm by the orders given by the DNA to mRNA in ribosome, right? This is the whole big unit, right? Means proteins have to be synthesized as there is a requirement, right? All the time this cannot continuously produce proteins and push them out of the cell, no. This protein has to be synthesized whenever it is necessary, example. You are having food. Once you eat the food, suppose it contains some starch. Then you must be knowing enzyme involved in starch digestion in saliva is salivary amylase. Now that salivary amylase has to be produced in such a short duration. By the time food is still there in the mouth, it has to be released and digestion should begin. So imagine the time, 1 to 2 seconds also it will not take, but as much as possible as a, we all know that food has to be masticated properly in the mouth, oral cavity. It's not just somebody is saying or elderly people are saying, it's mainly because for some more time you retain it in the mouth, these enzymes are produced, this salivary amylase, the digestion begins in the mouth. Most of us, we don't even understand why these people are saying all this, right? So, that particular salivary amylase is nothing but a protein, right? Then, salivary gland cells, they produce their genes that are involved in the production of salivary amylase. First, they must undergo transcription, then translation, then produce salivary amylase. See, so fast the things have to happen, right? Therefore, we will have to learn this in detail once again. So, now coming to the proteins. I told you all enzymes are proteins. You think of salivary amylase, you think of tyrolin, you think of renin. 
with the cortrypsin, chymotrypsin, any enzyme you take into consideration, they are all proteins, right? So every metabolic activity requires enzymes. So it may be digestion, it may be respiration, it may be any activity in human cell or animal cell or plant cell, they require these enzymes. Means they have to be continuously synthesized in the cell, right? But these are produced based on the requirement. In future, I'll tell you how the genes are regulated later. Right now, I'm explaining you. These are to be produced whenever the body requires them. They'll be continuously slowly produced, one after the other. Because food is mouth, in the mouth, it's saliva and money. When it goes to stomach, toilet has to be produced, renin has to be, sorry, the uh, pepsin should be produced and renin should be produced in the stomach. So, as the requirement happens there in the cell, that particular enzyme is produced. So, all enzymes are protein, therefore we require continuous protein synthesis in every cell. One thing. Then already I told you one more thing. All the proteins, most of the proteins are classified into their function, based on their function. There are the, all the building blocks of human body are proteins, right? So, they are the structural proteins, like they form the bones and they form the cartilage, they form the actin and myosin of cartilage, and they form the chromoproteins, hemoglobin, melanin, they are the chromoproteins. They form the our immune system, antigens, antibodies are proteins that will fight against the disease causing pathogens. So, proteins are must for our cell. And one more thing you remember, these proteins cannot be stored, like how you store the starch. You eat so much of rice, imagine, it gets digested, absorbed, goes in the liver through the hepatic portal system, it goes to the liver. In liver, this entire excessive glucose which is formed after the digestion will not be circulated. Liver will take responsibility of converting excessive glucose into glycogen in presence of the enzyme insulin. That conversion happens. So, once glycogen is formed, then it's done. Later, you will not to have it continuously. Means, you are not supposed to have the these kind of uh, what do you call um, starch and other things or carbohydrate diet you should not have regularly because already it is stored glucose to glycogen has been converted and whenever your body requires glycogen converts to glucose it is supplied to the body even whenever it is required the excessive glycogen or glucose cannot be fat no fat get converted back into glucose that happens with carbohydrate metabolism but not with the protein metabolism Suppose you are having protein now, that will be consumed right now only. That will be dissociated, that will be removed by the form of nitrogenous waste. Again, in the next time meal, you should have to have proteins. Therefore, proteins have to be continuously supplied to the body and continuously they are synthesized in the cell. Okay? Then proteins. I told you what are the other things about proteins. First, I told you importance of proteins in the body. Okay, this is the first point. Second point is the chemistry of proteins. So proteins are made up of long chain of amino acids. These are the amino acid chains. This is called as the polypeptide chain. Okay? This is the polypeptide chain. That is the chain of amino acids for the polypeptide chain. Okay? Now these amino acids are linked to each other by the help of a peptide bond. Peptide bond is formed. Then I told you already how peptide bond is formed. Peptide bond consists of CONH group. This is called the peptide linkage. Right? So chemically proteins are the polypeptide chains. Right? Now units are called amino acids. Then how are the types of amino acids? Amino acids are of two types. Some are essential amino acids some are non-essential amino acids. Essential amino acids will be synthesized. They, be, they have to be taken to the diet and non-essential amino acids are synthesized by the body. These are the types of amino acids. Totally we have 20 types of amino acids. Okay? Now, next part is this protein, how it has to be produced in the cell using the types of amino acids is produced. 
Imagine there are amino acid 10, amino acid 1, amino acid 7. It is going to form protein 1 or protein something called X, one protein is formed. Okay? Suppose the order changes, suppose amino acid 1, amino acid 10, amino acid 7 is formed, then it becomes a different protein. It may be performing amino acid number, protein number type of A. Means the number of amino acids and the arrangement decides the type of proteins. Now, the question is who will decide this serial order? Which amino acids should come first? Which amino acids should join second? Which comes third? Like that, in every protein minimum length they have proteins is around the amino acids is around hundreds to thousand amino acids that we have. Then somebody will be there to arrange these in the proper order. Somebody should have the information how these have to be arranged. Who is that somebody? That somebody is DNA. Okay? So DNA we call it a master molecule for this. DNA will inform the messenger RNA through transcription that what has to be produced. mRNA will go to the ribosome and produce the required proteins on translation. Therefore, we call this as the central dogma of the cell. Central dogma of the cell. Okay? This will control everything. But I told you once, DNA converting or mRNA is not just unidirectional, sometimes it is bidirectional. We call this as reverse transcription. This happens in some of the organisms like virus, some of the plant virus or virus which have RNA as a genetic material. They convert their RNA into DNA and produce it. That is the undergo a reverse transcription. Right? They are called retroviruses or reverse transcriptase viruses. So these are some of the points you should remember. Now I will enter into the protein. Okay? I want you to make some points or notes or types of amino acids. Who are all essential amino acids? Who are all non-essential amino acids? Okay? Then what is central dogma? They come from the short notes. Okay? Now take down those points and explain them. I think you did it. Let's now move on to the protein synthesis proper. What happens in protein synthesis? I told you the information for the particular protein from DNA is copied onto mRNA. That is called the transcription. Then this information of nitrogen base pairs will convert to required amino acids and proteins in the ribosomes. Okay. So protein synthesis involves two steps. One is transcription, another one is translation. So what is transcription? It is the process of copying of nitrogen base messages from one strand and a part of DNA to messenger RNA. This is the first step. They are copying messages not from the whole DNA, part of DNA from one strand. And it is called as transcription. They will be copied on the mRNA, messenger RNA. Translation is defined as the process of translating, you can remember this way only, translating nitrogen base messages of mRNA to amino acid language with the help of tRNA in ribosomes. Right? By tRNA in ribosomes. So, there are two things. Remember, protein synthesis is not just one small story. Although it happens first, it has a lot of things to do, right? First happens is, what happens is transcription. That is, one of the DNA part, because DNA comes of huge number of genes. 
only that particular gene information on DNA that will uncoil and only that information containing nitrogen bases act as a template and one more mRNA is formed. Suppose there is the information on this, this is the mRNA. Continue with it, red, 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 produce one more strand. This is the mRNA. That way mRNA is formed. This process happens by complementary base pairing. What is complementary? If there is adenine on the DNA, on mRNA, there is thymine. Right? If cytosine is on the DNA, the copied message is guanine. So it is always having complementary base pairing. So ATGC is complementary base pairing. That happens in transcription. Second thing is translation. Translating one language to another language. Meaning itself is same. So if at all two people don't know each other's language, then somebody should be there to translate their language. Right? One person talking one language, another person don't know that, then he knows some other language. There must be one person who is knowing both the languages. That person is called the translator. Here also, translation is translating nitrogen based messages which are brought by mRNA into amino acid language. Who will do that? By the help of tRNA. Transfer RNA will have anticodon. They read the code and anticodon reads the code. It is opposite to codon, anticodon, and it will bring the right type of amino acid that is to the ribosome. That is called translation. So, how to define translation? It is the type of transfer or translating language of nitrogen bases to language of amino acids with the help of tRNA in ribosomes. Okay, this is the transcription and translation definition. Okay, let me go next into the depth of transcription and translation. Already we have discussed it in a detailed diagram but just I will give you small diagram and I want you to label it. Okay. So, first thing in this is initiation of transcription. How exactly it is initiated? Suppose this is a double stranded DNA. Okay. DNA. Suppose this gene has to be transcribed. Then, there will be the binding of enzyme here. This I described. What is this? I write this as the A. You will have to label it. Then, this enzyme will bind to this place of initiation site with the help of a factor called as an initiation factor, IF. What is the name of IF? It is B. You will have to do this. This is a homework for you. Right? A, what is this enzyme? What is this initiation factor for transcription? Then, what actually this initiation factor will recognize an initiation site for transcription. What is the initiation site for transcription? Initiation site for transcription is possessing some TATATTA TA base pairs. And we call this as a Tata box. Tata box is the starting place of every gene which contain nitrogen bases as TATA at which transcription get initiated. It is a transcription initiation site. Okay. Once it is initiating, what will happen is this DNA will start uncoiling like this. Okay. Uncoiling. Here is the enzyme what I told you A. You are going to label it. And nitrogen bases are separated. These are copied. In what way? Suppose A, T, C, C, G, A. Imagine this is one of the strand that is running in 5 prime to 3 prime to 5 prime direction and the mRNA is formed in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction where A copied with U, G with C, C with G, C with G, A to T to A, A to U and so on. This is the messenger RNA, mRNA. This is a DNA template and we call this, because it is having reverse nitrogen basis as that of mRNA, we call this as the anti-sense strand. This is called as the sense strand of DNA. So this is the whole thing is DNA. One of the strand which has a messages opposite from which it is copying mRNA, it is copying it, it is called antisense. 
and the other strand suppose this strand has same messages suppose it is A here it will be on mRNA if it is U here it will be T here it is A G G C and here it is A okay. this message from sense codon or sense strand will be similar to the mRNA messages so it is called the sense strand right lot of, lot of questions appear by giving what is the basic strand and this strand I told you because they will give you they will ask you to explain or identify the, the strand of mRNA it's very simple you have to do complementary base pairing okay now let's now want to how it will end when it is a stop when this enzyme will stop copying it will be going on opening and transferring the messages now at a particular place it will be ended by the binding of termination factor which stops the synthesis of mRNA and tell me what is termination factor. Termination factor, name of the termination factor you need to tell. Okay? So that is which we have already discussed once you need to tell. Then once it is done DNA will coil again and mRNA will come out of the nucleus and go to the cytoplasm. That is about the transcription, initiation and elongation and termination. This drawing you just take it down. I want you to explain me or tell me what is A, B and C. Okay? Done. Okay. Now we are going on to moving on to translation. So the transcribed mRNA which has the information given by DNA will move to the cytoplasm and settle down on the ribosomes. Okay? And one more thing you write down, another doubt, another question for you is what are the other names for Tata box? Right? Write down. That's the fourth question. D, right? The other name for, for Tata box. Right? I told you two names. One is in prokaryotic DNA, one is in eukaryotic DNA. Right? What are the other names for Tata box? And what is Tata box? Okay, fine. Let's now move on to translation. Transcription you understood now. Let's go to translation. I told you it is the transfer of nitrogen based messages brought by mRNA to amino acid language. So here it is our mRNA. So I draw two diagrams here. So let me not go to the other side. This is the mRNA, 5 prime, 3 prime end. It has nitrogen bases, 1, 2, 3, any number. All these are brought by copying from DNA strand. Okay? These are all the messages brought by DNA. And one thing already I discussed, but still if you, you should again get the revision. The nitrogen bases are read 3 at a time. We call it as a triplet coding language or triplet codon language. So here three nitrogen bases will form one amino acid. Maybe these three form one amino acid. These three form some other amino acid like that. Three, three. This is what we call it as a triplet codon or triplet coding language. Okay. Triplet codon is a language of nitrogen bases which are in three at a time. Now once the mRNA enters, this is the whole thing is mRNA, mRNA enters the cytoplasm, it will have to settle on the ribosomes. But what I told you is already, ribosomes are not together. Ribosomes are active only when they are connected with each other. Smaller subunit and larger subunit should be together. Then only they are active. But when in the resting stage it is there, then they are not connected, they are separated. So this will settle on the smaller ribosomal subunit. Okay. Take at least six nitrogen bases in one ribosome because always two codons will be there in the ribosomes. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, six are taken. Okay. So this is a smaller subunit of ribosome. Okay. The ribosomal ribosome smaller subunit subunit is smaller. Okay? If it is prokaryote, it is 70s ribosome. If it is eukaryote, it is a 80s ribosome. 70s ribosome is having smaller subunit and larger subunit as 
50s and 30s, 30s and 50s, and in eukaryotes it is 40s and 60s, right? Now it has settled on the smaller subunit of ribosome. Now the codons have to be read three at a time actually. At this time exactly, all the amino acids which are present in the cytoplasm, all these are amino acids, they get activated. How? By getting an energy bond from ATP, these are called activated amino acids. Now, the enzyme involved in activation is amino acyl synthetase. Now, these have the ability to bind to the 3' prime end of tRNA. This is a transfer RNA. This is 5' prime and this 3' prime, they will bind to the 3' prime end of the tRNA based on the anticodon here. Right? It may be C, 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 that's an anticodon based on that particular amino acid we bind here. So this is the second step in translation. First step is activation of amino acids. Second stage is formation of amino acyl tRNA. This is called amino acyl tRNA. Okay? Now, these are around 20 types of amino acids. So 20 are the amino acids which are called as the passengers. You can just take it as an example. TRNAs like they are vehicles, right? They carry the passengers one by one. Okay. Now TRNA at the three prime end can carry amino acids, but always they are very particular based on the anticodon they will bind here. Right? There is a vehicle. You want to get into the vehicle to go to your place. You can't just get into any vehicle which comes on the way. Right? You will read. You will read the board of that bus. Okay. This is written. Oh, you go to my place. The same way. Translation while amino acids bind to it, they depends upon the anticodon, right? That particular maybe this is amino acid number seven I have written. Any number you can write because I am not particularly saying this amino acid, that amino acid. Amino acids I am giving you in general. Now, to begin the translation, any amino acid cannot start it because the starting codon is always AUG. Remember, AUG is the First two triplet codon to be translated. Then this codon is translated by the tRNA having the anticodon of what is the anticodon for this tRNA? This should be, let me write with the other color so that you will understand what is this exactly. Okay, here is our tRNA. TRNA carrying U, A, C. They will bind first. This is the TRNA one end. This is the loop. This is the three prime end. And for this AUG, the first TRNA which is brought, it will carry amino acid methionine. Met, written met or methionine. And such TRNA is called met TRNA or methionated tRNA. In prokaryotes there will be F-methionine present here. So it's a methionated tRNA. You can see here, according to the codon, antipodes will be there. According to the anticodon, tRNA bring the amino acid. So all these three, three things should match. Right? So if the codon is, let me write here, if the codon is AUG, is a codon of mRNA, Anticodon should be EUAC. This is the anticodon. Amino acid should be methionine. This is the amino acid. If these three match, then it's the right thing happening. Okay? So, just you have to draw this. So, if you are drawn this already, this diagram, that is the MET tRNA. MET tRNA is going to bind to the ribosome and it initiates the process of translation. Now, further, there is another codon here. Imagine CAC is the next codon. Then, another tRNA with amino acids will enter here. So, what that should contain is So, the first amino acid is methionine. But further, the same thing will not happen. What is next is the amino acid second one can be anything, right? 
with your rated amino acid is first thing. But second one, you can see here, there will be once the two first amino acids translated, what is going to happen if the first amino acid is translated, larger subunit of ribosome will bind to the smaller subunit. This forms the complete ribosomal complex. This is called as larger subunit. So, complete ribosome become active now. Right? Now, there is there are two places on the ribosome. Right? This ribosomal place I will show you here. First place is, this is the one, we call it the A site. Second place is called as the B site. Third place is called as the E site. Right? There are three sites. So, A site is otherwise called as the acceptor site or amino acid site. In this, the new amino acids will combine back. Second site is called P site where the polypeptide chain get elongated. In exit site, tRNA get eliminated. How it happens? Just check here. Once first one has come here, it is already in the P site. Now, second one will be bringing the new amino acid. Okay. This is the second tRNA carrying new amino acid, any amino acid. It may be 5 number, 4 number, anything. Then this will have anticodons for C it will be G, for A it is U, for C it is G. Okay? These are the anticodons. Okay? So codon, anticodon, tRNA is amino acid. Once these two are bound, then the two amino acids on two tRNAs get attached with the peptide linkage or we call it the peptide bond. Peptide bond or peptide linkage will bind. Okay, so here let me erase this because I am getting mixed up things. Okay, now peptide bond is formed. This is a peptide bond. B O N D bond. Okay, now first tRNA is this, second tRNA is this. One is on the A site. If you uh, imagine the site, this is on A site. This is the A site. This is on the P site. This is second site. This is P site. Now, what happens is, this complete ribosome complex moves to the third codon. Two codons. First codon is this, second is this, third is this. Third codon may be anything like A, C, G. Imagine some other codon. Right? This is codon number three. This first codon, this second codon, this third codon. Whenever it has to read the third codon, the complete ribosome will shift to this place, leaving the first codon outside. Right? Imagine this what happens. So this is the next diagram I am drawing here. Imagine this is the first codon it has. This is the second codon it has read. This is the first codon. First codon, second codon. Then it has gone to the third codon. Right? Now, if it shifts, what will happen? Okay? Imagine, I am writing the same diagram here. So this is, imagine this is AUG. AUG it has read. Now it has come to, the second codon is here. What is second codon? CAG, CAC, okay. Then this is the third codon, that is ACG, this is the third codon. So now the ribosome has left the first codon out, right. Understand how it's happening. First codon is totally out and it is reading, this is the first codon, this is second codon, this is third codon. It has left and come to the third position. So what has happened now? The tRNA which was there on the A site will shift to the P site. The one at P site will go to the E site. Right? So I will just draw you what happens here. The one second tRNA I am writing here. This is the second tRNA. Okay? This is second tRNA. Which you had brought amino acid number 5 I told you. And the first this tRNA go to the exit side. This is exit side. And this is going to get eliminated. This will be removed. Right? And it's tRNA. What it had got? It was methionine. The methionine is here. Okay? Now this is red. Now first A site is free now. You can see next codon is free. This will be bound by the newly entering tRNA. This is a very important thing you have to remember. This is red now. Right? So, once CAG is read by GUC, this is in P site now. TRNA, the second TRNA, the first TRNA. This is the third TRNA 
bringing new amino acid. This may be amino acid number 11. These two will bind now. Okay. Now again it will shift. Then this will go to the one at A side. TRNA go to the P side. The one at P side will go to E side and be exited. It is exit. It moves out. Then again this A side is free. New one will come here. Then again P side it will shift. Then new one will. So that's the reason now. This on this place continuously polypeptide chain is elongated. This is called as a polypeptide chain. It is elongated on P side. Therefore, the name is P side. P means polypeptide chain. Right? So it gets elongated. Then this is elongation of the complete protein or polypeptide chain. So imagine it has read around. Okay, how many translated? Translated codons. Codons, if they are around 30, 30 codons are translated. Then how many amino acids are formed? They are also 30. Right? If they write translated nitrogen bases, bases are 90. Then how many amino acids are formed? That will be the question. You can imagine. That will be another question. The fourth question to you. What is the question? If the nitrogen bases are translated as 19 number, then how many amino acids are formed? That is the question. So you have to take, get the clue. I think you got a clue now. You will write it. Right? So then the fourth question where you have to write what is how many codons are translated. Right? So that way continuously it happens and polypropylation elongates on this. How far it will elongate? How long it will go? Only at the end, normally during translation at the end, there are certain codons like UAA, UAG and UGA. I am sorry if at all I told something else, you just remember properly. UAA, UAG and UGA are the three codons that are going to end. Either one of them, if they come at the end, suppose this comes at the end here, yeah, suppose it comes here only. This is UAA is here, imagine. Then, no triplet codon is reading these. These messages are not read by any of the tRNA or any of the amino acids. These are called as the stop codons. Right? Stop means they end the process of protein synthesis. They stop the process of protein synthesis. And they are also called as the terminator codons because they are going to terminate the process of translation. They are either terminator codons or they are called as the stop codons. Any of them, UA, UG, UAG. Remember, this, these are the triplet codons to be. You just go through any of your books also. They are given this as a stop codons or the terminator codons. These are the codons, right? I told you, initial codon is AUG. Stop codons are UA, UAG, UGA. Three of them. So one stop code, three stop codons, one initiator codons. You will always remember them, right? Then even in the books also, a lot of questions will appear on this. So this is the diagram showing elongation of polypeptide chain. This is the diagram showing initiation of peptide bond. Okay, if you are not clear in the previous class, you just go through this and then write the proper diagram. This diagram is very important. Elongation will kind of happen like this. And it get terminated when there are stop codons entering on the stage, on the place, on the mRNA. Right. And remember one thing, always, trans, whenever transcription takes place, starting codons are always copied from the Tata box. Right. So they are not to be translated. So first codons are just left few of them. That means it will, you should not start the beginning only. First one you should not start. Leave some codons because they are initiator codons for transcription, right? Now, translation initiator codons, see many of you people will get confused. Initiation of transcription different from initiation of translation. There it is Tata box. Here it is AUG codon. AUG is the first codon to be translated. In between also you may get the AUG. But starting codon should be AUG only. AUG is the initiator codon. It is going to start the process of trans translation. Then comes any codon is fine. Okay. So what I told you? First step in translation is 
entering of mRNA into the cytoplasm and it settles on the smaller subunit of ribosome, first step. That time ribosome is inactive, second step. As the mRNA enters the cytoplasm, the amino acids present in amino acid pool of cytoplasm get actually energized. They get energized, they get activated in presence of enzyme amino acyl synthetase. See, I am telling you very simple language. Then they get an ATP also, they get energized. Now they have third step is formation of amino acid tRNA complex or amino acyl tRNA or TI, tRNA amino acid complex. tRNA structure should be written like this. One, two, three, three loops will be there. It is called the clover leaf like structure. Its detailed structure I will give you when I explain you about RNA. Right now you remember it is tRNA will be having three loop like structures. It is the tRNA structure. Now, these loops at the top, end loop is always anticodon loop. This will be having complementary base pairs to that of the triplet codon messages on the mRNA. Right? They are called as anticodon. These are called as codons. These are codons. These are the anticodons. Now, tRNA get the binding of amino acids. We call it amino acid tRNA. That is the next step. Now the first triplet codon to be translated is always AUG and it codes for the amino acid methionine. Therefore we write that tRNA binds to the, that methionine binds to the tRNA having the anticodon UAC, right? So codon is AUG, anticodon is UAC, amino acid is methionine. Three things should match and this tRNA we call it as methionine tRNA or methionated tRNA, met tRNA or without a methionated tRNA. This will first bind to the mRNA, right? To begin the process of translation. Once the translation is done, what happens next? There will be binding of the larger subunit with the smaller subunit to form the complete ribosomal complex. Complex is done, it's formed. Next. After the ribosomal complex is formed, this becomes active ribosome. Okay. Next codon to be translated is always the immediately next one. It is not any much anyway sure that this only should be there. Any codon should can be there, right? The second codon is translated now by the second tRNA amino acid complex, and now two places are there in the larger subunit of ribosome. One is called A site or the acceptor site or the amino acid site. Another one is the P site or the polypeptide site. Third site I have drawn here, it is an exit site. It is helping for moving out. It's like exit door, right? Exit site. Now, two things are filled now. And the amino acids on both the tRNA get bound by the peptide link, COH group. After the first initiation of peptide, what happened? The complete ribosome will shift to the third codon, leaving the first codon out. Right? Once it is left, what happens? The first tRNA goes out to the exit site. And its amino acid remain attached to the one tRNA that moves from A site to B site. Okay? Therefore, both of them they are linked and will be here forming. Now A site get free. Then new A site, which is free now, is occupied by new amino acid tRNA. Third one is it. Okay? Another tRNA with another amino acid will come to the A site. Once the tRNA binds to the A site, its amino acid and the amino acid present on the tRNA at P site, they get bound with the help of peptide bond. Okay? Then again the one at P site will leave. One at A site go to the P site. A site is free. A site is occupied by new amino acid tRNA. Again, the new amino acid tRNA, whatever amino acid has brought, it will bind to the amino acid present on the tRNA at P site. They will bind with the peptide bond. Again, the story continues. I hope you understood. Then, elongation of polypeptide chain takes place at the P site of ribosome. Now, 
This will continue till when? Till they reach a codon called terminator codon or the stop codon. What is the terminator codon consisting of? Either it is UAA or it is UAG or it is UGA. One among the three codons will be there at the last point which is called as the stop codon or the end codon or the terminator codon. Once the terminator codon binds, it binds with more to the terminator codon, that's the end. If these terminator codons are not going to bind with any other, I mean, they are not coding for any other like said. They don't have any TRA to read that message. Therefore, they are going to end the process of protein synthesis. Right? That's how the at the end what happens. That I'll explain you now. So once the both the things are happened, then last is post translation change. That I'll explain first you draw these diagrams. Okay. Actually, after the translation, what happened? That is what we call the post translation changes, right? Post translation, here the two ribosomal subunits, larger and smaller subunits, get separated, mRNA get disintegrated, and the polypeptide chain become active and go to the place where it has to work. Right? These are the three things happening. But before this, I would like to give you something details of the mRNA in this. Right? So during transcription, you get the mRNA, right? We got the messenger RNA, right? It is formed from the DNA. But if this mRNA you observe, it will be having lot of non-coding sequences here and there. Right? Most of the codons are coding when they are the meaningful codons. There are some non-coding sequences from 5' prime to 3' prime if you observe. These are called as introns. Introns, intron 1, intron 2 and all. All these are introns. The coding sequences are called as exons. Right? Before, after transcription, whatever it is formed, it has so many units of RNAs. These are non-coding. Therefore, this is called as the premature mRNA. Means it's not H mature, or we call it as HNRNA. Okay, HNRNA, or we call it as heteronuclear RNA, or small H capital N also there is HNRNA. So what is this? It is called as the heteronuclear RNA. Okay. This is having different different things, no? Exons, introns, also we call it HNRNA. Now it will undergo the nucle exonuclease activity where all the introns are cut and exons are joined. Cut and removing the introns and joining the exons. Join exons. This forms the smaller mRNA which is coding mRNA. One side is 5 prime and one side is 3 prime. Now, one more thing happens in H. This is the regular mRNA now. In eukaryotes, this happens. In mRNA, is ready. It only in prokaryotes, you don't get the heteronuclear RNA. It will be having all coding sequences. Now, after before entering into translation, this will have to undergo some more activities. What is that? First one is, it at 5 prime end, there is methylation happening. That is binding of the methyl guanosine triphosphate. That is called methyl guanosine triphosphate we bind. This process is called as capping. Right? This mRNA, whatever we have, here there is capping. This a cap is formed here at 5 RNA. This is a 5 or the capping is nothing but methylation. Methylation is happening. Methylation means there is binding of methyl guanosine triphosphate and unusual nitrogen base. And in the 3 prime end, there is binding of poly A sequences. Poly A, A, A around this is called around 200 to 300 A or adenosine 
peptide we call it as a poly A tail. One is capping, one is formation of poly A tail at the three family. Now this mRNA is ready to undergo translation. Right? The first one I told you, the removal of exhaust we call that as cutting and joining. We call this whole process as splicing. Splicing refers to not slicing, it's splicing. Splicing is cut and join. What is it cutting? It is cutting the non-coding neutrons and joining the coding exons. Right? Therefore, the process is called splicing. So, before the eukaryotes, before entering into translation, mRNA get modified because it has three things happen. What is that? First one, splicing, capping and then tailing or we call it as a poly A tail formation. These are the three things happening. First what happens is, once the mRNA is formed by the transcribed process from DNA, it will contain a lot of non-coding sequences called as the introns. These are not going to form any protein. Therefore, there will be splicing happening where in between the coding sequences of exon, you get introns. All the introns, tuck, 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 they cut. Exons can join. They form a small complete coding sequence. That is after the HNRNA, because heteronuclear RNA. After splicing, we become, it, it is called the mRNA. Then, before entering into the translation, it will undergo some more changes where there will be methylation happening or fibramine there will be capping. Capping is binding of meth that is methyl guanosine triphosphate will bind to this point and then the end, the tail end, the 3' end of the mRNA get bound by poly A sequences. That is how you will get a completely modified mRNA. So at the end of the, the sequence or at the end of maturation, the mRNA contains, the structure of mRNA will be different. They are not like normal mRNA. How it has started in all the mRNAs, including prokaryotes and eukaryotes, it will have some general structure. What all it will contain? This will have a 5' prime with a cap region. Then you will start with AUG here. All these are coding sequences, coding sequences, coding sequences till the end. And here you have AAAA, -A -A -A, many. This is called as a poly A tail. Right? And this is at the 3 prime end. This is at the 3 prime end. Here you have stop codons like UAA, UAG, and these are the stop codons. Stop codon. And this is the initiator codon. These are all the coding sequences called as exons. This is the total structure of a completely mature mRNA. Ready to translate. Right? This word you have to remember what all will happen. HNRNA, heteronuclear RNA, remove, undergo splicing, remove the non-coding sequences, Add the coding sequences by cutting and joining. Then there will be capping, cap formed by methylation of fibramin, and tailing will happen by addition of poly A tail. Therefore, then only the mRNA is ready to undergo translation. So the mature mRNA will be like this. This is complete mRNA. At fibramin, there will be a cap region. There will be starting code, initiator code on AUG. Very rarely, sometimes you may get. GUG also has a starting codon, initiate codon, very rare case, but always AUG is the initiate codon. All these are the coding sequences called exons. These are translated three at a time, that is triplet coding language. One triplet coding language is read by anticodon of tRNA and it brings the right mRNA translation begins. All these messages are translated, how I told you the whole process. And translation stop when it meets any stop for stop codon like UAA, UAG or UGA. One of these codons it will bind. And then if suppose I told UAC, I don't remember. If it I told you just corrected UAA, UAG, UGA are the three stop codons. UAA, UAG and UGA. Remember these, these are called the stop codons. Okay? They stop the translation process because no anticodons are there for this, no tRNA will create this, no amino acid is 
coding for this code all that's why this ends translation at the end of the mrna you have poly a tail how many yeah, adenine will be there adenosine will be there around 200 to 300 adenine will be there at the end that forms the poly a tail at the three prime end that's the structure of mrna this drawing can be asked for the structure of mrna okay so that's that where we are ending then next class i'll give you remaining types of rnas then we'll go to genetic code right till that time you work on the need material need questions and please ask me some doubts because most of you are observing you are not watching also you are uh, means you have to watch it it is your studies it's not that something entertainment we have put it therefore the people are not reading it along no you just go through i want all of you are attendance over there and you have to get all the questions and post me very few people are reacting only those are only reacting every time others also will get activated then only you will do well because this chapter it just is very technical right so i expect all of you to react and write the questions and ask me questions and do the homework whatever i told you that is the great way to success right you have to always be with the subject don't get away from it anyway there is lockdown and moving around and all it's a waste anyway you're not moving around sitting and sleeping how long you do it right sit and work out so this is a nice way to understand the subject by reading again, writing it, drawing it, understanding, talking to somebody, explaining somebody, asking doubts, getting answers. These are the active things of our brain. Keep doing it. Otherwise, you become like inert, not living beings. So don't do that. I hope my students are all like that. They are doing really well. Many are asking questions. This is a great thing about you. And keep doing it. And knowledge is not so easily available. You have to get it. Right? So go for it. Right? Next class, I will be finding out how many of you are asking me questions and I will tell your names here. Okay? See you. Bye.